Hello everyone, this is Ashish Sani from Innovate Yourself. Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we have an exciting project lined up for you. We will be showing you to how to run Rasa chatbot on the ESP32 microcontroller. That's right, we are bringing the AI conversation to the edge. Before we dive into the technical details, let's quickly understand what Rasa is and why running it on an ESP32 can be a game changer. Rasa is an open source framework for building chatbots and virtual assistants. It offers powerful natural language understanding and dialogue management uh, capabilities, making it an ideal choice for creating intelligent conversational agent. Let's talk about the ESP32 microcontroller. This tiny but powerful device is known for its low power consumption and versatility. It's perfect for edge computing scenarios where we want to run applications locally on the device instead of relying on the cloud services. Now, I hope you have got a clarity what exactly Rasa chatbot is and what ESP32 is. So now we can dive into the main project and we can start how to run the ESP32 or you can say the opposite which is how to run the Rasa chatbot onto the ESP32 microcontroller. So that's all that we will be covering in this today's session. Now let's straight forward go to the project and let's understand how to do it. So let's get started. Alright guys, so now first of all, let's start by creating our basic Rasa chatbot so that we can actually connect that to our ESP32. So for that, first of all, like you can see on my screen, I have PyCharm already opened. So now in this video, I'm going to start everything from scratch. And in fact, I'll use the latest version of Rasa open source. And I think that's 3.5 version, which we are using right now. Right. So I'll use that. And for that, let me do one thing. Let me create a new project for you so that I can explain you everything from scratch. So create a new one and just uh, give it a name. Let's say Rasa ESP right so this is the name that I'm giving and here I'll create the Conda environment because uh, my system is MacBook uh, so uh, it's better I'll use Conda so that I will not face any errors in this case right so this is the one and now at the end you can uncheck this and I'm using the version as 3.9 only so now I'll click on create All right, so the project has been created. Now over here you can see there is nothing inside this directory or inside this project which we have created because it's completely empty, right? So now we'll go to terminal and we'll start first of all by setting up the Rasa chatbot or Rasa environment basically, right? So you can see Rasa ESP is the name that we have created for our Conda environment. And in this, what exactly we have to do is we simply have to type a command pip install rasa and just because we know now rasa x is no longer uh, like uh, available like in open source so if you have to opt for it you have to purchase that so currently we in fact we don't want that either so that's why i'm directly installing rasa only so that i can directly connect it right so simply install this and wait for it uh, to get installed completely because it's gonna take some time all right so you guys you can see the Rasa uh, open source is installed successfully. I can verify it as well by simply typing Rasa version in my terminal. So just press enter. So you can see Rasa 3.5.10 is the version that we are using right now for Rasa version and Rasa SDK is 3.5.1 and Python version is 3.9.16. So this is what exactly we have done. In fact, we have the Rasa chatbot installed successfully. So now uh, what next we have to do is we simply have to go to uh, like creating our initial project, right? So firstly, we'll start by creating our initial or you can say the basic project so that we can at least check the functionality, right? So for that, you know how to do it because if you have already watched my previous videos, you must be aware like how do we create a Rasa project and how do you actually start with it, right? So if you haven't watched that video, go that uh, go and watch that or else you can watch this one as well because we are doing the same thing, right? So rasa init hyphen hyphen no hyphen prompt press enter. So this will basically start creating your initial project, which will be sufficient enough for us for right now to connect our rasa chatbot to 
the ESP32, right? So that's what we will do now. So let's wait for it to create the project. All right. So the project is created or you can say the initial project has been created successfully, right? Now you can uh, do one thing, you can run Rasa shell and you can start working on it or else we have a second option or let's say the second way, how do we actually check it? And that is by simply typing this command, Rasa run hyphen hyphen models space models hyphen hyphen enable hyphen API hyphen hyphen course uh, and this inside double quotations your star right so this is the way how we can do that and by this command what exactly we can do is we can hit the apis basically right so for this what we will do is we will actually get an api for rasa server or let's say your rasa chatbot which we are running locally right now and on that we can send the request whether we can get a, a get request or you can uh, send a post request as well right so we can do that so i'll start this one and from here, I'll be checking it up. Okay, so the Rasa server is up and running now, right? So you can see the server is up and running and now you can hit the request and you can check whether it's working or not, right? So for that, uh, just because currently we are not going to check it here, instead we are going to check it on the postman just for now so that we can verify that whether we will be able to connect uh, or let's say we will be able to hit the apis or not because if you have watched my previous video for chat gpt with the esp32 so you must be knowing like what exactly we were doing we were actually hitting the apis so that when we will send a post request we will be able to get the response back from that api right so the same thing we have to do today as well that's why firstly we'll verify it on postman and once that is verified then we will put the code for esp32 so that we can uh, uh, hit a post request and then we'll get a response back right so this is what we are gonna do so for that let me open up the postman if you don't have the postman you can check my previous video there i have already shared the postman link so you can uh, download it from there all right so the postman is open now you can see here i'm selecting post request this is the api where i have to hit it basically 192.168.1 is the ip address from my system so that's why uh, it is uh, this one over here but for now i'm not gonna use this ip address instead i'll show you with local host and later on i'll show you like from where i have got this ip address right so i'll show you that as well so right now just because it's a post request so you also have to send a data along with that so that you can hit that post request and you will get a response back right so this is the uh, like api on which we have to hit and what's the data for the data you have to go to body inside this raw and json so you can see the data is already selected because i have already tested this up right so here you can see you have to pass two key and value pair one is message that what message you want to send second one is uh, who is the sender right so this can be anything for now you can set up your name you can set up like one two three or any string as well right so it's up to you so let's say this time i'll not send hi instead i'll send uh, uh let's say uh, good morning let's say so this is the message that i'm going to put okay so this is what we have and now just because our rasa server is up and running so we can actually hit that request and we'll see what output we are gonna get right so now data is passed api is this one we are sending a post request now click on send so can you see we have got the output and what's that output so the output is how are you so let's say i want to send a different message now and that different message is happy let's say send it again there is something to cheer you up this this is or maybe it is not uh, taking it correctly so that's the reason you can see it is uh, following the wrong path right but that's not a problem that's a part of a rasa chatbot once we will uh, like check it up so we can uh, figure it out right that's not a problem so instead let's say i'll pass uh great for example see great carry on that means now it's following the right path right so this is the way you can see like uh, our chatbot is working successfully and in fact we are able to uh, talk to the chatbot using the apis 
right so this is the way of doing that now uh, let me show you like from where i got that ip address right because i cannot write this local host right so i have to put up an ip address and for that what i'll do is i'll simply go to terminal on your system if you're using windows you can go to command prompt right and if you're using linux you know like it's terminal only so here i have to write if config so in my case it's uh, if config and in linux system also it's if config but if you're using a windows system you have to write ip config right so you have to use it like that so now from here i'll check it like where is my ip address so i'll scroll up and i'll find out where is my ip address oh this is not the one i think here it was in between i think this is the one let me let me copy it up and let's check it up right so let me replace this with localhost and now let me hit this request again okay i'm getting the output that means i am selecting the right ip address right so this is what exactly it is right so i hope now you have got the idea like how do you hit the api for your rasa chatbot so now when you're done with this step and if you are also able to do it successfully so now we can proceed further and now to proceed further we will go to the arduino id where we will actually write up the code and in fact the code i already have so i just need to make the changes as per the changes that we have made right now right so let me uh, go to the code now all right guys so you can see this is the code which i already have with me and over here uh, first of all you need to set up the ssid and password right so currently i have to change the ssid and password because i am on a different network now so i have to change it to the other one and uh, similarly here you can see this is the message hello let's say i'll pass good morning here right so i'll pass this one and i'll see the reply and uh, along with that if you scroll down you have to see like this is the ip address which we have specified right now but as per the postman as per the data that we have checked you can see this is something else so we need to replace this ip address with that so i'll replace that one and over here if you check the payload inside the payload i have to send a different data so sender is whatever sender you want to write the name for message is what message you want to pass currently i am making it dynamic so that if you want to customize your code you can get the different message every time you pass a different value for it right so in this way we can modify that right and after that that data will be sent successfully right so this is all that we have to do now the next thing is that i have to upload the code and uh, let's see how it's going to happen so you can see the node mc is also connected to the system right so i have connected it here all right so now i can upload the code because my system is connected to node mcu so now go to tools first of all verify the board is selected right so it's not selected right so i'll select the right one and also you have to select the right port so that you can upload the code to the right uh, direction right so this is the port that i have selected right okay so this is all that i have done now just upload the code and let's see whether it's working for you or not so let me upload it all right so now you can see the code is uploaded successfully now we can go to the serial monitor and we can simply check that whether it's working or not so let's open it up so it's connecting to the network first of all so it's the ip address for that and this is the result or this is the output that we are getting for the text that we have sent so let's say we have sent good morning so good morning simply means we are greeting that so for greeting we are getting hey how are you so similarly now just because we are sending the same message again and again so that's the reason it's going to give you the same reply but uh, for now just because this code is just to take a single input and give you the response accordingly so now let me do one thing let me change the input and let's see what's going to happen so for that i am sending it as let's say unhappy for example and uh, i'll upload it and i'll recheck it so let's upload it first so the code is uploaded now go back to the serial monitor again see i am sending unhappy so i am getting here is something to cheer you up and here is some image which you can open and here is did that help you so it's uh, like that right so this is the image which you can simply open and you can see let me open it up for you i'm passing it here 
just make sure to remove these extra slashes so this is what you will get in the image right so this is how i hope you have got an idea like how do you connect your rasa chatbot to the esp32 and how you can further get the conversation done with your rasa chatbot and your esp32 so currently we have just talked about a single conversation or single step that we have talked about but in a similar way you can make a complete conversation as well as you can also convert this normal conversation bot to the voice bot as well so i hope uh, this was really helpful for you all to learn and to get started with the rasa chatbot and for the esp32 integrate further right so that's all for my side uh, for this so that's all from my side for today i hope everything is clear if you have liked this video do click on the like button and if you are new to our channel and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet do click on the subscribe button so that you do not miss any videos from our channel also you can hit the bell icon if you want to get the notifications from our channel if in case we upload any new videos on our channel so that's all from my side see you in our next video till then bye bye and happy learning